A medieval historian and also and a former senior judge of the Supreme Court of the United Kingdom, Lord Jonathan Sumption has been described as the brain of Britain and little wonder why. He's been an outspoken critic of lockdowns. He fears that the death of democracy is now a live threat and he took on the mob on Q&A over the right to defend religious freedom. He's currently in Australia on a speaking tour. I'm thrilled to say Lord Sumption joins us now. Lord Sumption, welcome to Credlam. Delighted to have you on the program. I want to ask you, let's start with COVID. You were an early critic of the lockdowns and you wrote uh, back in October 2020, this is how freedom dies. You talk on the fight. We saw what obviously happened here in Australia, Melbourne being the world's most locked down city. How do we get to the position where so almost so quietly we gave up our freedoms? I think the explanation is fear. Experience shows that if you frighten people enough, they will submit to anything. Uh, and really that is what happened with COVID. This is a change in our tolerance of risk. A hundred years ago, we had a much more serious pandemic than this. 50 years ago, we had a pandemic which was slightly less serious, but which we had fewer medical means of dealing with. We didn't panic. We didn't lock people down. Uh, we didn't impose these kinds of restrictions. And it, it, it seems to me that the change that has come about is that we have uh, become too risk averse. And, and we, to avoid risk, which is actually part of human life, uh, we have allowed governments to do uh, what they want with widespread public support. We haven't in Australia in particular had a review of, of what we gave up and why we got it, gave it up. And in the case of Victoria, I mean, the parliament was shut down. There was no scrutiny on the executive. I've argued we need to review and claw back all of these liberties we, we gave to, you know, an authoritarian moment in time. Otherwise, this becomes a new benchmark for where we go in the next pandemic or the next crisis. Do you think we've lost these freedoms forever or do you think that we will be able to, if we, the public, stand up, we get them back? Well, we'll have to wait and see. Uh, but uh, probably the, the, the effects will be very long term. The reason I say that is that um, what democracy and what freedom depends on is a culture of restraint. Uh, which is um, uh, something that there's a sentiment that there are certain lengths to which you should not go simply because it works. Once you breach these limits, once the, uh, the, the unspoken rule of restraint is, is, is junked, the spell has gone. Mm -hmm. the, the limit is no longer there. There's no longer the force of sentiment that stops people behaving in this way. So I'm very much afraid that if this were to happen again, uh, the same fear would enable governments to do exactly the same thing. What will, I think, deter them next time is that we are now becoming much more conscious of the simply enormous collateral cost. The cost in terms of mental health, the cost in terms of education, the cost in terms of social dislocation, and the sheer, sheer financial cost but which in many countries has brought the public finances close to bankruptcy. I think that that was something that we didn't take into account at the beginning of the last pandemic, but we're hardly going to be able to ignore it in the next one. You've arrived in Australia at a very interesting time. We had a week dominated uh, last week, and I suspect it's not going to go away, on the issue of religious freedom. Uh, and someone sacked because yes. leading a football club was um, at odds with being a public and proud Christian and condemned for something that someone from their faith group had said, not them directly. What, what's your take on that? Well, my only knowledge of the, of the facts of that case is what I've read in the newspapers over the past few days. But on the face of it, this is a problem which is not peculiar to Australia. We've had similar things in Europe and similar things in the UK. Um, uh, and uh, to my mind, uh, the, uh, the intolerance that people show of opinions that they happen to disagree with uh, is a, a symptom of the really serious narrowing of our intellectual horizons. 
And this, I think, in a democracy is a source of very real concern. Um, the, I happen not to agree with the uh, Catholic teaching or the teaching of other religious denominations on, for example, abortion, which I believe was the problem at the heart of that case. Um, I think there should be mm -hmm. a, re a regulated right of abortion. But I think that for me to go on from that uh, and say, and what's more, nobody else is entitled to have a job, even if it's utterly irrelevant to the issue of abortion, unless they agree with me, uh, is an exercise of intellectual tyranny, which has absolutely no place in a free or democratic society. You were here at right time, Lord Sumption. You're going to shake up the debate, I have no doubt. I look forward to seeing you uh, in person later in the week. Thank you for your time.